Hey everybody, this is Alessandro from Innovate with Impact, hashtag small relief. I'm here today with Avin Tavakoli, um, a lawyer. Hi, Av hi Avin, how's it going? Hi, good, go ahead. <laughs> Avin is a lawyer based out of Zurich. She's uh, dealing a lot with uh, small and medium sized businesses. And so I thought it would be amazing to interview her uh, for this show. And so she gracefully agreed to do it. And I'm super excited to have you here today. Um, so as we get into this uh, interview, but before we get started, please quickly introduce yourself. Hi, everybody, and thank you very much, Alessandro. It is my absolute honor also to be today to share this time with you and also with all the audience that are going to be engaged with this video and watch. Um, thank you first for inviting me and thank you also for the introduction. Yes, my name is Ewen, so it's one win, Ewen, not two. Be careful. <laughs> and I am based in Zurich, Switzerland. I have a very colorful um, zigzag, actually, career background from mathematics, statistics, to sports, to banking, real estate, teaching, research, law, and again, banking, and then um, entrepreneurship. So um, this is going to be a, I think, a short video, but we try to keep it as compact as possible. So uh, recently, I mean, currently what I do and what I offer also to the smaller and medium sized uh, business owners and also professional individuals is um, that I combined all of my years of um, professional and personal experiences throughout all the different areas of career that I've been. And then I offer them the right packages to protect their businesses or their, um, uh, let's say, individual professional lives by providing them the right contracts um, risk mitigation strategies and out-of-court dispute resolution methods and tools because these days a lot of business owners they cannot really afford to I mean afford I'm not mean I don't mean it financially but then afford with the whole resources to get involved into court proceeding systems or trials or to start like suing each other or ruining each other and at the end of the day they come out with um, bigger losses actually that they were expecting. So this is what I also offer to uh, business owners so that they can save time, energy, money, and other resources, and above all, their relationships and their brands so that um, they resolve the potential conflicts amicably and respectfully outside of the courtrooms. And my main mission amongst all of this is to make law accessible and understandable and a bunch of fun for others because unfortunately a lot of business owners they have been always having these issues that mm, if we go now hire lawyers they're too expensive it's too complex we don't know how to deal with it and therefore they were somehow uh, uh, pulling pulling away and uh, uh, um, shutting down from uh, leveraging actually all the possibilities and opportunities outside so that is what I am doing I'm trying to simplify the complex and that's, I'm sure, not all too easy. I mean, there's a lot of complex complexity going on when we talk about legal issues, right? So maybe that absolutely. Would... I mean, if I say how many thousands of uh, uh, provisions and uh, um, legal um, restrictions, rules, and regulations, and all of these things that everybody actually should know to to go through life with less risks, or at least not with less risk, but better protected, then um, I have to count until the next um, weeks or, or months during the whole time of crisis. I can just count to the, the legal provisions which could apply to, to businesses or to um, uh, relationships and brands, etc. So therefore, uh, we really don't want to go there. We want to leave up everything to the experts in the field and then just uh, take advantages of uh, the knowledges and the experience. Of course. So. Let's dive deeper into that. How has your practice changed maybe even, let's say, in the past few weeks? And how has, the, has this whole situation maybe affected your, your clients in general? What is the trend that you're seeing and how, how are you helping them? That is a great question because it's very authentic and very original. These are the times that we are at. And I think for me and for a lot of people, the message that these days I'm trying to send out to, client, to my clients, to my communities, is that we now have understood that crises are there and above all that they can hit everyone everywhere at any time. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, throughout the past years, um, I can't say it is unfortunate that these countries have not seen crisis, but unfortunately people has got, have got too comfortable 
or too confident in the current situation or in the status quo that they have or they've been dealing with. And therefore, they were neglecting a lot of uh, important measures or, or uh, steps that could have safeguarded their businesses or their relationships, their brand, their image and their reputation. So what has been now coming up is this wake up bell that now everybody thinks it can also hit me it is there so now we can't even ignore it or neglect it but now the smart people uh have gotten either active pre-crisis times in the past so that those who are well prepared and those who are hit now unexpectedly and they are not prepared um, that is now actually what um, creates a little bit of chaos i mean not a little bit actually global stamp still let's call it this way i try just to minimize the, the drama a little bit but um we see really a kind of a global st stamp still so that many industries are affected i can't say all of them because there are still things that are working like supermarkets are still working or some public transportations are still working but most of other industries are um, somehow grounded or frozen and everything is delayed or suspended or, or, or really frozen, let's say. And we can't really also predict how much or how far or how high will be the, the losses or the risks for the times after. Because as we all know, time is not stopping and has not stopped. So it, it will continue to, the clock will continue to tick. And these times will pass as well. But the smart ones are those who are now sharpening the axes and uh, uh, trying to sharpen their business acumen and getting prepared and putting their acts together and say, okay, now this is now the time not for me to to lay down or lay back and watch movies and this is not a holiday this is a time for me to regenerate to reevaluate to rethink my concepts my uh, relationships my methods my business model how can i make it adaptable to times which are unexpected and unpredicted and also that we don't have much power over it because we can't just say this is a crisis and i can act the way i want so not everybody is now able to or better said allowed to handle the crisis his or her own way there are certain rules and restrictions and measures which we have received from governments so from the organizations that are or authorities who are actually analyzing the situation and then deciding according, accordingly so that um, everybody else needs to follow so there is no free will of how we handle this crisis no i want to party i go to party. no we don't have to because that will somehow then question our sense of solidarity towards other people who might be at risk so the situation is very unique it's very new it is very uh, special and that gave actually the rise to a lot of confusion in the in different industries because a lot of experts these days i have been observing they're coming up and they are having like presentations or online uh, trainings or or videos but most of them are talking the same thing and they are trying to reconfirm to us how new how unique and how uh, unpredictable and how uncontrollable this situation is but isn't it what we all actually know what we expect these days from those experts is to come up with solutions and say, yes, we all know this is a crisis. This can affect every one of us in private and in business life, but what to do? What are the solutions? Where are the problems? What is that that you are facing as a challenge? And how can I, as an expert in my industry, come up with solutions? So to your question, the, the changes and the let's say adaptings of all the businesses I, I cannot use actually the term adapting for everybody because not everyone is now in that uh, capacity or in that modus to start adapting a lot of people are still in the mode of confusion and reacting they are waiting for decisions to be made or for measures to be announced and they just are waiting to react accordingly which is not actually the smartest way because then at the end of the day when this crisis are over they will be standing at the end of the line where the others who have been preparing and sharpening their acumen they are in the front lines so if we want to belong to those it is the best time actually that has ever happened because it's so unique 
we, we have, I mean, none of us, even my, my father, who is 90 years old, who said this is a very unique situation um, and a very unique crisis in the world. Because first of all, it's global. Second of all, it is not affecting only certain people. It is affecting each and every one of us. And we have to get creative and see how we can uh, create new solutions, new uh, offers, new uh, way of uh, uh, conveying our message and the values to our market or to those who are going to be our uh, potential clients. Uh, how are we going to help them by solving a certain problem of them? Because once we are in front of them in the times of crisis, they will think of us also after the times of crisis. And then we will be those go-to addresses and not those who have been hiding themselves throughout such sensitive times. I love this message that you're putting out right now. It's so super relevant in this particular time. And it's exactly what I think the world needs to hear right now. It's not the time to, you know, sit and watch Netflix. Trust me, I love to watch my Netflix every once in a while. It's, it's fun. But it's, you know, really, it's not the time to go on a break or just wait for things to happen. Nobody has an idea how long this will last. And, you know, the people that are really smart, exactly like you just said right now, the people that are smart, they are now going out there and finding new opportunities and they're doing the business and they will be ready once the market starts picking up again. And um, as we talked uh, off camera before already, right, it's, uh, we were handed lemons, so let's start making lemonade. Absolutely, absolutely make it more fun. Because one thing that he just said to go out there, I said, okay, we can't go out there, but we can go in there. <laughs> and just reevaluate some of the, I mean, unfortunately, that's actually, it reminded me of one other um, aspect of how my business has been affected, as you just asked, is that my business was very going out there. I was the master of going out there, and I'm still, but I am just restricted. So uh, I do, or I have been doing also a lot of um, speaking, training, presentations, conferences, traveling all around the world for all these times. And as this um, uh, lockdown kicked in, I literally had to cancel until further notice all my travels and engagement plans and schedules. So that the schedule suddenly became blank. My agenda became blank. And uh, there were only just um, the calls or the sessions or whatever, which was on the phone or, or on the internet, which was on my agenda, they were still remaining. But all other travel plans, conferences, and really there were loads of them. I'm happy that I could accomplish a couple of them. And I have been already, I went, I have been to four continents literally and 12 countries throughout the first quarter of the year, uh, even less than the first quarter until. 13th of March, well, my um, quarantine also started. So until that day that I had my very last meeting, on 12th of March, I was back here in Switzerland, and then I stopped, uh, I stopped all of my further travelings and, and engagements all around the world. But that was actually a big, um, let's say, punch also over my head. See, oh my God, I have planned all of those, and I was looking forward to all of those. So I was for two, three days, I was in real, um, uh, uh, let's say, mode of, of shock that I thought, what to do now? But I did not allow myself, I did not permit myself to let it go for more than those two days. Mm -hmm. Because I thought, okay, you know what? I come from a country of constant crisis. Actually, my origin is, is Iran. So I born and then right afterwards, we faced a revolution. And then there was an eight-year long war brutal war and then afterwards it was never resting the country has never been resting so we have been through like sanctions embargoes unrest inflations it's therefore what i learned out of those is that the message that i'm now trying to also convey to to my community to my market to my friends and to all of those that may hear this or just uh, may may listen to us later on is we don't have to wait for the time that everything is over because we never know when the next uh, crisis may kick in. The crisis may be something like this. Nobody knew that there will be a global pandemic in the year of 2020. Everybody was looking forward to a powerful rocket and rock steady year of 2020. And suddenly all of those somehow dreams went into ashes uh, right during the first quarter. So a lot of people are still frozen or they are surprised. Therefore, 
what I have learned out of all of this, so that I have a three um, ang triangle method of handling or facing the crisis, is that I always see, look at the crisis, like in the frames of a triangle, if let's say my face or my lips are the crisis, just all of those parts of the triangle here at the top must be courage. So we first have to have the courage to face or to talk about the crisis at all. So the crisis can be a risk, it can be a, a, an unpleasant situation. This can be really used in every area of life and business. So the first thing is that we have to have the courage to face it, to talk about it and to deal with it and to tackle it. And then on, the, on this side, on my left side, I go into confidence and confidence comes from that level of maturity and competence as well because once we have acquired enough knowledge enough information enough data around the topic around a crisis for example now then we also have the possibility to step up and talk about solutions because once i know the needs of my market during such times i can step up as leader and come up to the market and say, this is what I can offer you exactly during these times before you have to wait all these times and until it is going to be over. The thing is that nobody knows when it's going to be over. Three weeks, three months, next year, we don't know. There are like these methods of um, maybe pre-deciding to have the worst case and the, the best case and the most likely case. So the most likely, which will be, let's say the realistic, prediction must be probably summer maybe if we are done by summer then we're good so by that time during these times is the time of learning to to preparing and then we will get to that level of confidence to talk and then on this side that would be then the creativity because when we have the courage to step up and to talk and then we have the confidence also to stand strong and say i'm here now to to provide something then it is also the time to see what are the best uh, um, sources or what are the best channels for me to provide those solutions or those values. So then we need to get creatives. We find the solutions, we have the confidence to step up, but then we have something of value and also to convey it in creative ways. So these times, crisis is, is um, a direct link for me to creativity. The more unrest and, and chaos you have, the more creative you get. So it is like uh, we have a saying, actually in our language, maybe it's also in, in these countries the same, that is the, the need is the mother of creativity. Mm -hmm. Once you don't have something and you need something, you get creative, you find solutions. And um, then afterwards, when we leverage these three parts of the triangle, then the two outcomes are also the parts of my method that I present to others to um, only uh, uh, get busy or get involved with those uh, variables that they can control. Mm -hmm. You can't now, we can't now control the duration of this pandemic. Mm -hmm. But what we can control is that we can work on our health, on our body, on our physics, on our mental health, on our goals, on our business model. These are the variables that we can control. So the C number four is control. Control whatever you can, not try to control anything you can't, and that leads only to frustration and exhaustion, and that's not what we want. And then once we have, con we have control over those and we have the overview, then we can start capturing the opportunities because we have worked on the right methods, on the right variables, and then these are the times that the opportunities reveal. You know, so that is the time that we can say, okay, this is the way that I can help this person. This is the way that I can help this area of the market. And then everything will become clear. It is like the curtains will fall and then we see the whole scene in front of us. So that is for me what I really would love to share also with whoever is having access to this, uh, to this video and this interview later to go through these methods, mm -hmm. to get creative, to get curious, to look at the problems and to get busy only with the things that you can control and do not let yourself be frustrated with the things that you can't control and then go into the modes of creativity my method for example as i said i used to do a lot of trainings also for business owners on their legal affairs on the challenges that they have but then i realized that during these times i cannot go and speak and go on stage and convey my message so now these days 
it was really the good uh, kick also for me to start finally uh, getting involved with the online parts of my business. So how can I reach even more people by probably um, lacking the physical contact, of course, which is, which is a pity or the sad part, but that pushes me towards new solutions. Okay, how else? I can help people, how else I can communicate with them. So I think this is what everybody else out there can do. Because what I put as mission for myself is not just to provide the services, let's say contracts or advices to business owners, to my clients, but I also train them. I coach them on legal matters. I provide uh, uh, presentations on specific topics so that until certain stages, they can still resolve some of their issues by themselves. And then when it really exceeds a certain level, then of course, that is the time that they can call me or whoever legal advisor to the trust that they like. It is really powerful, like really powerful stuff that you're sharing and so relevant. And I love the fact that you're bringing a methodology to it that is very easily relatable and that you can easily, easily visualize. So we are almost at the end of our interview. A really important question that I would like to ask you What's your number one key advice that you're giving to any small, medium-sized business right now? Uh, first of one, as well, I mean, I have actually maybe two advices, but I start with one of them. First of all, uh, this is not the time uh, to uh, let fear um, really control you because we are not really in a position of, in a situation of life and death. There is not some, it is not a war, it is not a, um, a really, you know, insecurity or, or um, displacement or something that can happen or have been happening in some er other areas of the world, which is much more uh, intense and much more, let's say, dangerous or fearful. But this situation is now that we are just encouraged or urged to keep distance. And this is not a um, really social distancing. I don't call it that way. I call it physical distancing. We just are not allowed to get physical, to meet, to, to touch each other, to talk to each other. So that's a different thing. What I really give as the first advice is just um, let the fear go away. And the moment and how you let the fear go away by uh, getting creative and finding solutions. Mm -hmm. And once you start going back into your business and not waiting for the time that the crisis are over, then you can not only survive the crisis, but also thrive afterwards so that you come out of the crisis as a winner and not as a reactor to the circumstances or to the measures that are going to be in place after the crisis. So no fear and creativity. And of course, to all business owners, do not look at the lawyers as monsters. They're there actually to help you. And I actually am there, of course, to, to provide extra value, even especially during these times, because one thing that we all have to understand and one very last, um, last message that I have to say is this has been affecting each and every one of us. We're all sitting on the same boat. And these are the times that we have to reach out to each other. We have to stand to, to, uh, f with each other and um, really uh, reach out the helping hands also to our fellow entrepreneurs and, and others who are maybe in some situation of um, despair and frustration. To, to solve their problems. So what I offer to them is really um, great advices, great values, exactly also tailored for the times of crisis and to implement right after the times of the crisis so that once this crisis is over, you are prepared and in good shape actually. And then you will have like every day of your week busy because there will be then work overload. Absolutely. It's all about you know being there for each other and helping each other out. Listen, thank you so much for this amazing interview. Um, it was Absolutely. really insightful. Um, I will share this like all the other uh, interviews on LinkedIn as well. Um, I will obviously tag you and um, I'll make sure that as many people as possible that I, that I can in my network get to see it. Um, and uh, I really think you're doing amazing work and um, I cannot see more of what it is that you do. And um, I wish you only the best of luck. And I really hope that in the near future, we'll get to see each other in person, not only through Zoom. Absolutely, absolutely. That's uh, the time, this, this too shall pass. We just have to keep, uh, you know, faith goes over fear. This is very important. Absolutely. Have faith and then work on your stuff and um, you will shine afterwards.
That's a perfect uh, statement to end this interview. Thank you so much. And I look forward thank to- Thank you too, Alessandro. See you. Bye-bye, <laughs> everybody. Thank you. Thank you.